This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Automotive electrical engineers have talked up the benefits of switching to a 48-volt electronic architecture for decades. It allows the ability to deliver much higher levels of power to electronic devices across thinner, lighter, and lower-cost wiring. But to go to a full 48-volt system would require everything that typically runs on power from the battery, like things like the bulbs, window motors, and wipers, to be redesigned for 48 volts. That's what's been holding it back until now. Tesla is pioneering a 48-volt system on the Cybertruck, but there's been some confusion around it. Even though Tesla has confirmed it, the Cybertruck is not a full 48-volt system. It uses what's called a zonal architecture, which means 48 volts runs throughout the vehicle, but clusters or zones of the vehicle uses devices to step down the 48 volts to 12 volts, so existing components can still be used. We got an up-close and exclusive look of this at CareSoft, a company that does automotive benchmarking, cost reduction consulting, and more. The team has already started tearing into a Cybertruck and invited us in to share some of its insights. They showed us how Tesla is using light blue connectors to indicate what's 48 volts. So orange indicates high voltage and blue is now 48 volts. While it looks like things like interior bulbs are still 12 volts, there's a surprising amount of blue connectors throughout the Cybertruck. And one thing we can for sure tell you that's gone 48 volts is the motor connected to the steering column on the inside of the vehicle. CareSoft president Terry Wachowski thinks this motor could be used to provide steering feedback to the driver, so they think the steering wheel is connected to the wheels on the road and not the steer-by-wire system that it actually is. And if you want to learn more about the Cybertruck steering system, its battery pack, and extensive use of large castings, you can check out our interview with Terry Wachowski on the AutoLine website or YouTube channel. German union IG Metall lost its bid to gain more control over Tesla's plant in Berlin. Workers at the plant voted for a majority of non-union members for its new works council. But the union IG Metall still expects to take 16 of 39 seats, making it the largest group in the works council. And here's how that works. By law in Germany, workers must be represented by a works council. But it doesn't have to be a union, and different areas of the plant are represented by different leaders. IG Metall wanted to get more influence over pay and working conditions, but apparently the workforce didn't want the union to have that much power. No doubt you've heard some people claiming that EVs actually put out higher emissions than ICE vehicles. But let's put that urban legend to rest. A study from Bloomberg New Energy Finance says, that the life cycle emissions of BEVs are significantly lower than vehicles with internal combustion engines, up to 70% cleaner. It studied medium-sized vehicles that are driven 250,000 kilometers or 155,000 miles and included factors like emissions from manufacturing and, re and recycling batteries, emissions from generating electricity and more. Even in countries or areas that use a lot of coal to generate electricity, EVs are cleaner than ICE vehicles. Interestingly, the study did not include emissions from drilling, refining, and distributing petroleum products like gasoline and diesel. So BEVs are even cleaner than stated here. EVs do create emissions though, especially in the manufacturing process. But in the US, after 25,000 miles, EVs on average become cleaner than ICE vehicles. Bloomberg NEF says studies that claim EVs are dirtier rarely stand up to scrutiny. It says, quote, they typically rely on outdated information about how fast the power sector is changing, old battery manufacturing data, or artificially low total vehicle mileage assumptions. Car makers in Europe had a strong month in February. Sales were up 10%, falling just under a million units. More than 131,000 BEVs were sold, also a 10% gain. But hybrids were even more popular, with 287,000 sales, a gain of 24%. And plug-in hybrid sales were also up 
The Volkswagen Group, Stellantis, and Renault were the top three automakers in February. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi for compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software defined vehicles. Several years ago, prices of palladium and platinum surged, but now with more EVs, prices are tumbling. The metals are used in catalytic converters, but since EVs don't have an exhaust system, demand is falling. Palladium was as high as $3,000 an ounce in early 2022, but now it's down to $1,000 an ounce. Prices of platinum are down 9% so far this year, after dropping 8% in 2023, and the auto industry accounts for 40% of platinum demand and 80% of palladium. Palladium prices are expected to keep falling in the future because there isn't another industry that can help offset the drop in demand. But platinum could fare better since it's used in jewelry. BMW reported its financial results for last year, and the numbers are a bit of a mixed bag. It sold a record 2.5 million cars, beating its previous pre-COVID record. Revenue was up 9% to almost 108 billion euros, and its EBIT was up 7.8% to 17 billion. But its net profit fell nearly 31% to 4.3 billion euros, mainly because of higher expenses and a significant drop in the results of its investments. BMW management says it expects all these results to be slightly better this year, and interestingly, it says that sales of its high-end EVs like the 7 Series, X7, and Rolls-Royce Spectre will drive profits higher. We also got more information on BMW's next generation EVs, what it's calling the new class, which will be the company's first dedicated EV platform. It will offer 30% more range, 30% faster charging time, 60% lower CO2 emissions from the battery manufacturing process, and a 40 to 50% cost reduction in the EV battery pack and powertrain. Even more specifically, the wheel, brake, and tire combination will save nine watt hours per kilometer. A new heat pump improves efficiency 40% in the winter, while the weight of the heating and cooling components were cut 25%, and the cost came down 20%. By the end of the decade, it expects EVs to account for 50% of its sales, and it will have an EV model in every major segment of its lineup. And sticking with BMW for the moment, it's testing out an interesting process called wire arc additive manufacturing, but really think of this like 3D printing with a welder. A robot welds together aluminum wire layer by layer to build components or tools. BMW says it works particularly well with large parts like body, drive, and chassis components. And while they come out of the machine looking a little weird, they can be lighter and stronger than die cast parts thanks to the use of generative design, which optimizes the size and shape. Parts that customers can see would probably need to go through some sort of finishing process to remove the wavy surface, but others that are more hidden, like this upper strut tower brace, might not need to be. Vehicle trials start next year, and it hopes to one day use the process with production cars. We showed you teasers the other day, but now we've got a better look at the Kia K4 which will replace its other small cars, the Forte Seed or Serato, depending on the market that you're in. The body surfaces are much more angular than before, and the K4 will use its lighting as a distinctive design element. The interior design appears a little more toned down to me, and it features a layered dashboard with a thin display tucked into the upper section. We expect to get more details on the new Kia K4 when it debuts at the New York Auto Show next week. 
And we've got an interesting auto line after hours coming up later today. Mickey Bly is the head of global propulsion development at Stellantis. He'll be talking about all the work they're doing with BEVs, PHEVs, and fuel cells. But he's also a total small block V8 gearhead, and we'll learn about Stella's efforts to keep its ICE powertrains going until the market goes fully electric. Larry Webster from Haggerty will also be on the show, so join John and Gary when the show goes live on the Autoline website as well as our YouTube channel. That's a wrap for this show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game, When the peace and quiet of your morning commute is as comforting as your morning macchiato, that's what really matters. Bridgestone Taranza EV tires. Less noise for more quiet comfort.